Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to be making this gorgeous autumn themed bracelet and we're going to use the beads that came in Duty's Deluxe Bead Box for the month of October. As you can see, this bracelet features gorgeous jade stones, sparkly green crystals and some Czech glass leaf beads. It's a relatively quick, easy bracelet to make. Once you've created your beaded components, it comes together pretty quickly. Now, if you're not familiar with Didi's Deluxe Bead Box, I'll leave a link to the website down below in the description section of this video. I'm also going to leave a coupon code in case you're interested. They are based out of Canada and they only ship to the US, so keep that in mind. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. And here we have Didi's Deluxe Bead Box for the month of October 2023. The name of this box is Falloween. It's such a cool name, it really is. But the reason they named it Falloween is because it contained both fall and Halloween items. But the nice thing about these beads is that you could totally use them together. In other words, you could take some beads from the Halloween collection and use them for a fall piece. But as you can see, the box contained gorgeous beads, it really did. It contained autumn jade beads, yellow jade nuggets, natural river stone, as well as sparkly crystals, and so many other beautiful items. Now I've already done an unboxing video, so if you missed out on seeing that video, I'll link it down below as well. So let me show you the items we're going to be using for today's project. Here are the items we're going to be using for today's project. These four are from the box, and the rest are from my stash, basically all the metals. I decided to go with a bronze color today. So let me go over the sizes with you real quick. We have some Czech glass beads here. They measure 10 by 8 millimeters, and the color is Alabaster Picasso with a copper wash. And here we have some beautiful autumn jade beads. They measure 8 millimeters in size. And the strand we received was very colorful. It was a 15 inch strand, and I tried to pick a bead from each color as you can see. And here we have some 4 millimeter faceted bicones. They're Austrian crystal bicones, so they're pretty high quality. They measure 4 millimeters in size, and the color is olive green. And here we have a Lucite leaf charm. The color is tangerine, and it measures 15 by 15 millimeters. I have a piece of chain that's about four inches long. You don't need a whole lot of chain for this project. And I believe those links measure three by five millimeters. I have six bead caps over here, and I believe those measure eight millimeters across. And here I have a leaf charm. It's actually pretty big. You could probably use it as a pendant, but I wanted a nice big charm for this bracelet. It's 32 millimeters long, and that includes the loop, and it's about 16 millimeters across. And here I have a toggle clasp. I believe the ring meshes 15 millimeters across. And here I have some ball head pins. They're pretty thin. I think they're 24 gauge and they're two inches long. In addition to this, I'm gonna be using some craft wire and some jump rings, but I'll bring those out in just a few moments. So now that we've gone over the materials, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start with the eight millimeter jade beads. Now I just have four here. I'm gonna use the fifth one as a charm once we assemble the bracelet. My bracelet's gonna be about seven inches long total. So if you need something longer than that, you might need more of these beads. I have a long piece of 20 gauge wire here. The color is antique bronze. I like to work with long pieces because then I minimize the wastage. Now for these, I'm gonna do wrap loops. And normally I use 22 gauge for wrap loops, but since the holes are so big, I thought I would use 20 gauge instead. So to get started, I'm gonna grab the wire with my round nose pliers, about an inch and a half down, kink it, switch to this part of the pliers, and you're gonna to have to decide how big you want your loops. That's gonna be personal preference. I'm gonna take the tail now and wrap it around the nose, flip the pliers around, continue to wrap that tail to the back. And now using these pliers, I'm gonna grab the loop. And with another set, I'm gonna grab the tail and do a couple of wraps. And now I need to cut off the excess. I'm using flush cutters. And now I definitely need to tuck that little tail in. And this is what you should have. So now I'm gonna grab the bead cap and then a bead. and another bead cap. Like so. I'm gonna grab the wire again. 
line up the bottom loop, kink it, switch to this part of the pliers. It's the same spot that I picked when I did the other loop. Wrap the tail around the nose, loop the pliers around, continue to wrap to the back. Once again, I'm going to grab the loop. I'm going to cut off the excess. And now I'm going to grab the tail and wrap it around. Snip off the excess. Tuck in that little tail. So that's my first beta component. I have another piece of wire here. And normally I work with pieces that are much longer, but it's difficult to do that when you're trying to film because the camera gets in the way. So once again, I'm gonna grab the wire about one and a half inches down, kink it, switch to this part of the pliers, wrap the tail around the nose, flip the pliers around and continue to wrap to the back. Now I'm not gonna close it just yet because I need to connect it to this component. So I'm gonna open up that loop a little bit and slide this component into it like this. And now I'm gonna grab the loop, grab the tail and do my wraps. I usually only do two wraps but you can certainly do more if you want to. Let me snip off the excess. Tuck in the little sharp end. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna load one of these bead caps. And now another bead. I think I'll use this one actually. And another bead cap. Once again, I'm gonna grab the wire, line up the bottom loop, kink it, snip off the excess. Let me put my pliers back in. I'm gonna wrap that tail around the nose Flip the pliers around, continue to wrap to the back. Grab the loop. And grab that tail and do my wraps. Let me cut off the excess. Tuck in that sharp end. And this is what we have so far. Pretty simple. So now I'm gonna speed up the film and finish these two and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. And as I was making these, I realized I was missing two bead caps. So you actually need a total of eight. What can I say, guys? It's kind of late where I am right now. And I've had a very busy day today. But anyways, you can see I connected all of them and all of them have wraps except for this one. I left that loop open because I'll be connecting it to a ring and we'll do that later on. So now let's move on to the next step. Here are the beads for this step. I have a total of seven there. And obviously, guys, I've already played around with this design. So I kind of know what I'm doing. And I've already figured out the length of each segment and how many beads I need. 
Like I said earlier, you're going to have to base that on how long you want your bracelet. I have another piece of wire here, but this one's 22 gauge. Whenever you're working with tiny crystals like these, you have to use thinner gauge wire. And I'm actually going to make my loops a little bit smaller as well. It wouldn't look right to have big loops with tiny crystals. And it's the same process, guys. But let me go ahead and do one with you. Once again, I'm going to grab that wire about an inch and a half down, kink it, switch to this part. Actually, I'm going to switch to this part, which is a little bit smaller. Wrap the tail around the nose. Flip the pliers around. Continue to wrap to the back. As you can see, that loop is considerably smaller. That's what you want. I'm going to grab it with these pliers and with another set, I'm going to grab that tail and do my wraps. And it's the same thing. I'm doing two wraps. Snip off the excess. Tuck in the sharp end. Pick up a crystal. Grab the wire again. Line up the bottom loop. Kink it. I'm going to go ahead and snip off the excess. Put my pliers back in. Wrap that tail around. Flip the pliers around and continue to wrap to the back. Sometimes I kink the wire, wrap the tail around the nose and then cut off the excess. And sometimes I kink the wire, cut off the excess and then put my pliers back in and wrap the tail around. You can do it either way. It's up to you. I'm going to grab that loop, grab that tail, and do my wraps. Snip off the excess. And let me tuck in that little sharp end. And this is a very tiny component. Let me pick it up with my pliers and show you. Very, very tiny, as you can see. So once again, let me pick up the wire. I'm going to grab it with my round nose pliers. Kink it. Switch to this part of the wire. Wrap the tail around the nose. Flip the pliers around, continue to wrap to the back. I'm not going to close it with wraps just yet. I'm going to open up that loop. Slide it into this component. Like that. Grab that loop. Grab the tail and do my wraps. Snip off the excess. Let me grab it again so it's easier for me to handle and tuck in that little sharp end. And now I'm going to grab a crystal like so. Grab the wire with my round nose pliers, line up the bottom loop, kink it, switch to this part, wrap the tail around the nose, continue to wrap to the back. Grab that loop, grab the tail and do my wraps.
snip off the excess. And tuck in that sharp end. So now I have two connected. I know it's a little tedious because they're tiny crystals. But anyway, I don't want this video to be too long. So this time I'm going to do them off camera and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. As you can see, I completed this strand and I left that loop open for the same reason as the other strand. I need to connect it to a ring. And let me just show you the ring. It's a huge jump ring. Here it is. I'll be connecting the strands and some charms to this ring. And I got this ring of a piece of chain that I purchased at a gem show a while ago. Let me just show you. Here it is. I think the rings measure about 12 millimeters. But anyway, I like to do that a lot. I like to buy chain like this and then cut off the segments that I need. So now we're going to move on to the next step. Let me get the materials for that. Here are the materials we're going to need for this step. I have my check glass beads. I have some ball head pins and I have my piece of chain. And my goal is to make this section the same length as this one here. But the reason I have a long piece of chain is because I need something to hold on to. That's what I recommend anyway. So let me show you how we're going to do this. I'm going to slide on the bead this way so the pointed end of the leaf is facing the ball of the ball head pin. I guess you could do it the other way, but I think it looks better this way. So once again, I'm going to grab that pin right where the bead is, leaving myself enough room for the wraps, kink it, switch to this part of the pin, wrap the tail around the nose, flip the pliers around, Continue to wrap to the back. I'm going to open up this loop now. And I'm going to attach it to the chain. Now I'm not going to attach it to the first link there. I'm going to leave that one empty. I'm going to attach it to the next one. Like this. Let me grab that loop. And I'm going to do my wraps. I think I'm going to do three so I can cover up that pin. So now I'm going to cut off the excess, tuck in the sharp end. Let me just arrange the chain so you can see it. Now one thing I do want to point out, for today's project, I'm going to attach all of these charms on the bottom side of those links. Now you don't always have to do that, you can alternate if you want to, it's up to you, but that's how I'm going to do mine this time. And I think to make it look interesting, I'm going to do three wraps on this one and two wraps on the next one. I'm going to alternate. So let me go ahead and do the next one. Once again, I'm feeding the bead onto the ball head pin. I'm going to grab the pin, leaving enough room for wraps, switch to this part of the pin, wrap the tail around the nose, flip the pliers around, continue to wrap to the back. Let me open it up a little bit. And now I need to decide where to hang the next one. So I think what I'll do is skip one link and insert it into the next one. But before I do, I need to make sure that I'm going to connect it to the bottom side of the link this link right here. So it's going to go in like this. Let me grab the loop, grab the tail and do my wraps. This one's only going to have two. Let me snip it off. Let me grab that link and show you. It's a bit tricky. So 
So now I have two charms attached. So my next charm is going to have three wraps and I'm going to skip one leg and attach it to the next one and so on and so forth. So let me go ahead and do that off camera and I'll be right back and show you what I did. Okay, I'm back and I've completed all three strands as you can see. I did have to make a few changes though. Initially, I was only going to use eight of these leaves, but in order for these two strands to be equal, I had to add an additional leaf. So there's a total of nine now. Now this one here is a little bit longer than these two. So what I'll do is add a jump ring and that should take care of it. But I'm not going to add the jump ring where the ring is going to be. I'm going to add it at the toggle clasp end. So here's my ring. And before I feed all of these on, I'm going to make a couple of charms. I have another eight millimeter J bead. This one's a red one. I really like that red color. And here's a bead cap. I'm only going to use one bead cap. Now, since this hole is so big, I can't use the ball head pins that I have because they're very skinny. They're a thin gauge. So I'm going to use this one. This one's a flat head pin. And I'm not sure if I can do the wraps. I think I can. I think it's thin enough. I'm sliding the bead on first and then the bead cap. It looks like a little berry, as you can see. And now I'm going to grab that pin kink it, switch to this part, wrap the tail around the nose, flip the pliers around, wrap to the back. It is pretty tough, I will say that. And now let me grab that loop, grab the tail and do my wraps the best way I can. Let me cut off the excess, tuck in the little sharp end. So there's my little charm and here's the other charm, it's the leaf. I'll be attaching it with a six millimeter jump ring. Let me open it up. I'm simply going to slide it into the jump ring like that and close it up. And here's the other charm. I'll be attaching it with a small jump ring, a five millimeter jump ring. And the reason is that this loop is kind of big. Let me close it up. So now I have my three charms and now let's assemble the whole thing. I'm going to open up this ring. I was going to say jump ring, but it's really not a jump ring. It's more like a decorative ring with a cut and I need to find that cut. It's cut so cleanly. I don't even see it. I think it's right there. Let me open it up. I'm going to slide the jade beads first and then the charms. And now this green one So far, so good. And now let me slide this one on. Well, I changed my mind and I decided to switch around the order of these strands. I loaded the one with the leaf charms first and then the crystals. And the reason I did that is because I wanted the leaf charms to hang in the same direction as the charms that are on the ring. I hope that makes sense. Of course, you could do it the other way and that would be fine too. But I think this way is much better. Let me go ahead and close it. So that's what we have so far and now I'm going to attach the clasp but I do want to mention something about the loops on this strand here. They need to be facing the correct direction. Let me explain. If this ring is flat or parallel to my mat then this component has to have loops that are vertical and it does but then I have to worry about this one over here. Here's the ring portion of the toggle clasp. I'm going to be attaching a jump ring right there so the jump ring will actually be vertical which means that this component has to have loops that are horizontal. I hope that makes sense. It's kind of important because otherwise the bracelet won't sit properly. Here's a jump ring. 
Now it's not as important on this end because these strands are going to be flipping around because of the charms. So I'm not going to worry about it as much, but you do want to make sure that the one with the green crystals isn't twisted around. Here's the bar portion. And I'm going to have two jump rings at this end. So there's a six millimeter and a five millimeter. Let me open up this jump ring. I'll connect this side first. And before I do, I want to make sure that these components are sitting properly. Let me connect this one now. And that looks about right. And I'm going to close it. Let me open up this jump ring. And connect the bar portion of the toggle clasp and close it up. And now let me connect this side. So there's my pretty autumn bracelet and I think it's adorable. I really love it. I love all those gorgeous autumn colors and of course all these dangling leaves remind me of fall. Let me put it on. And here it is on. Isn't it pretty? I love that big leaf charm and I love how all these leaf dangles or charms flop around. It has a lot of charms but not too many. very very pretty so anyway guys i hope you like it as well and i hope i've inspired you and you can make your own autumn bracelet and just have fun with it guys you can have as many charms as you want to on that ring you can even have some on the top side if you wanted to it's up to you i was going to add one at this end but then I changed my mind and I'm glad I used the bronze metals because to me, bronze and copper are very appropriate for fall. So anyway, guys, I'd love to hear your feedback. If you could leave some comments down below, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.